Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Composite Arf or CARF MiG-17 build. This is video number two in the actual build series, video number three in the entire playlist. So stay tuned and we will get back into the build of this beautiful aircraft. All right guys, last video, we basically finished the tail section up for this portion and uh, we started moving into the rear part of the fuselage and we got some of the air brake stuff set up. What we're gonna do now in this video is we're gonna be a little bit jumping around as well too, as I mentioned, but we're gonna start to focus on the air brake setup and getting that 100% complete. So from there, we can get the pipe back installed and uh, hopefully get the rear section all buttoned up. Now we do have one light on the back part of this aircraft. We've run the, the wire for that light. So that portion is done, but we do also have to think about the afterburner lights, which we will need to, uh, to install as well too. So there's some stuff that we need to still deal with and we may have to revisit that when those parts come in. So anyways, let's dive back in to the rear fuselage. All right, so we're just getting the air brake mocked up here for installation. We're gonna do one at a time. And uh, one of the little tips here for you is you don't need to wait for your glue to dry all the way. Uh, you can use high salt to glue that block in place and then add a couple drops of CA just on the corners there and uh, that'll hold everything in place while it cures. So a couple of the things we got to do for the installation here. Now our air brakes at the back are taped shut right now. So we know they're in the closed position and we've got the servo sitting in the closed position as well too. We will confirm that by plugging the servo in before we glue it in its final location, but we are in the closed position. Now we're also using an inch and a half horn and we do have the option of going one more hole in on the servo horn if needed. So, but we're gonna use the, uh, the inch and a half location and uh, that should hopefully provide the right amount of movement. So what we need to do is uh, I've marked out the, uh, the line of the block where I'm comfortable with it sitting on the fuselage. That gives us a location to sand on the fuselage. And uh, we're gonna pull this block back out and then we can just sand down the edges there so we have a bit more of a uh, profile that follows the fuselage. You can see if you look right in the middle, there's a bit of a gap in between that block. It's probably about four millimeters. So that's the amount we need to take off on the top and bottom portion of that block. So that is the process for installing these, uh, these air brakes. I think it's gonna be a pretty straightforward scenario for the installation. Uh, keep in mind, we've got a ball joint on this side and we've got a clevis on that side. The clevis is not fastened right now, it's free rotating. Once we get this installed and everything's happy, then we'll put some CA on that clevis side and make sure that uh, it is stuck in place. And uh, our ball joint on this side here, the servo side is gonna take up the slack or any movement that is required in the entire system. But we're kind of looking at a, a straight shot here. Fuselage is also sitting on its side still. So we've got one side down, the top is on this side right there. All right, so first servo is installed. Uh, we did exactly as I mentioned. So we used the 20 minute high saw, uh, sanded down the fuselage and uh, used four dots of medium CA on each corner to hold that in place. So it's actually held in place right now very well. Uh, we're gonna let the high saw set up a little bit and then we'll flip this over and do the exact same thing to the other side. All right, so uh, air brake servos are all hooked up and good to go. And uh, they work very, very well, actually. Uh, you can see the black bundle of wire on the bottom of the fuselage. That is the wire going to the connector at the very back. We'll take a look at the back in a second here uh, for the afterburner light. So that wire is actually silicone uh, wire. And this is uh, the wire 
for the Swiwin uh, cables that go between the data relay module and the engine and fuel pump and that type of stuff. So high temperature uh, silicone outer, uh, nice thick gauge on the inner, and uh, that's what I use to run the lighting wires to the back. And then at the back here, we've got an MPX connector. So this is a uh, uh, Mcotech, I think, or something like that it's called. Uh, anyways, it's got the board that gets soldered onto these eight pins. And then the actual lines get soldered onto the board. So this is the, uh, the female connector that's actually glued in place there. And then we've got the male connector, the pins and stuff that's sitting right here. So when we get the afterburner set up, that'll get installed. All of them will get hooked up to those eight pins. And then the afterburner itself will be uh, plugged in right there. And then all of our wires for the Afterburner light come to this section right here, and that's where the uh, the module is going to sit, is right down in this area. Saw that, I think, on uh, Dave's aircraft uh, on the RC Universe forum for this, uh, this build. So we're going to put that right there, and then there's going to be another uh, six-pin connector on this side for the lighting system. And then on this side right here, we've got our surfaces and light uh, for the rear pin light on this 12 pin connector. And then we've got our air brakes on this six pin connector. So I put the one six pin connector on this side for the air brakes, because this side will also be a six pin connector. So there's no way to, uh, to mix those guys up. And then uh, we've got all the wiring run inside the fuselage. So last thing to do here before we put that pipe back in is a couple things. Number one, we wanna check the movement of the air brakes. Uh, this side, which is the right side, is actually working perfectly. Uh, this side here, which is the left side, we've got a little bit of binding, uh, I think, on this lower pivot point here. So we just got to check that out. And then we've also got just a little bit of sanding to do right here in this area. So we're going to sand that off the air brake so it's uh, not binding when it closes. And then the air brake will be done. Last thing we need to do before we put the pipe in is just to pull all these clamps off, clean up the, uh, the high saw holding this uh, heat shield in, and uh, then we'll be able to uh, reinstall the pipe. All right, so pipe is back installed and we've moved it back a little bit. I think at the very beginning it was in hole number two from the front. We've moved it back two more holes, but it's not fastened in place. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the front part of the fuselage, we're going to install it on the back part of the fuselage. And then from the front here, we're gonna slip the motor in the engine and see what kind of spacing we have. Uh, and then we'll have to just adjust it from there, whether we go forward or backwards, I'm not sure yet. So uh, we're gonna get the other fuselage attached. All right, so we've got the pipe lined up here. We actually ended up moving the pipe all the way forward to the forward most hole. And uh, with the engine sitting in its little home, uh, everything lines up really, really well. So here's the customary view from the back to give you the perspective of the engine nice and centered. Looks awesome, sitting in that position very, very nicely. And there's a shot on the inside of the engine sitting in its home. So it fits really nice. Uh, we've got our spacing set up from the edge of the metal pipe. Uh, again, I've talked about this in many videos. You're doing roughly about 25 to 30 millimeters of spacing and the spacing is from the edge of the metal pipe, not the carbon bypass. So keep that in mind when you're positioning an engine in a pipe. Uh, some of the pipes with the big bell mouths can be a different setup. So I've reached in there, marked the holes with a paint marker, uh, just letting it dry before we pull this engine out and then we'll separate the fuselage and we'll be able to uh, bolt the engine in place. All right, engine is mounted. Uh, this setup is super easy with the, the fuselage separating there. Like this is absolutely awesome for access. Uh, I couldn't imagine this being a one piece fuselage and trying to do all this stuff. It would be an absolute nightmare. So anyways, we've got the, uh, the engine mounted. That's a big step done. And uh, just as we've been going through this, whole process. I've been uh, just playing around with uh, equipment location and stuff. I mean, we're, it's a big plane, but we are fairly tight as far as equipment location goes because everything's got to fit 
really in the center area on the main tray. Now I'm thinking I'm probably gonna take things like the ECU here for the engine and just put it off to the side. Um, just stuff like that. Up front, we're still gonna keep things simple. We're gonna have our power box display up here. We need to get the extension. We're gonna have our power box switch, so the main on off switch up here as well too. And then we are also going to have our uh, fuel valve up here as well. And uh, any other on off switches, like if we need an on off switch for the, uh, the, uh, the light set, uh, setup, then we'll also do that up here as well. But uh, yeah, so this tray will be fairly uh, sparse with all the equipment being down there. And the reason for that is just this hatch comes on and off. Um, the, the rest of the stuff's a little bit more difficult to get to, so we wanna keep this uh, easy access, basically. So next step would generally be bolting these fuselages together, but because they're so easy to come together and apart, we really don't need to worry about that too much. Now we can put the fuselage together. Uh, we will have to separate it later on to run our uh, light uh, set up and all that stuff. So uh, we'll have to come apart again for that. But rear fuselage is good, ready to put together with the front fuselage. All right, so I'll show you guys how easy of a process this actually is. Um, quite simple. So uh, we've just got the back supported on the stand. Not bad at all. <laughs> Man, that's so easy. Incredible. Super cool. And then what we'll do is we'll just take this, lift it up, and get the fuselage centered on the stand. So it also, that last little bit is a kind of have to stick it in place. And I'm sure the more it's done, the easier that gets. So that is putting the fuselage together. Super simple. Because again, there's no manual for this aircraft, you kind of have to make some assumptions on how things work here. Uh, if you're watching this in the future and there's a manual, awesome. Uh, basically this carbon tube just sits in the fuselage. This is the rear uh, stab tube. Now there's a Allen key right here near the top and that is matching up to right there on the, uh, on the vertical. So what uh, I'm, I'm assuming what needs to happen here is this needs to get glued into the fuselage. Otherwise there's no way to keep this vertical uh, attached. So what we're gonna do is we are going to install this end into the vertical. We're gonna put some high saw around here and drop this guy in and get it installed and let that cure. Now it's important obviously to make sure this end is installed in the rudder before you put this in because getting that lined up is very critical. All right, so we got the, uh, the vertical and horizontal stab all glued in place. Uh, when I glued this down, I just put some pressure on it and added some tape just to make sure that, that uh, everything sucked down as much as possible. So that's done and curing. And we are gonna move on to these beautiful wings. Now, the basics of what's going on on these wings is of course, we've got our aileron servo mounting here. The arm comes out and attaches to our control horn. Flap is all internal. You can see it there. There's the, uh, the linkage connection right there. Now this rod here is what holds the aileron surface in. So I've pulled the rod, the access is right here. We've pulled it all the way out. And a uh, reason for that is I just wanted to show you guys the structure in here. So they've done beautiful uh, painting on the inside of this, a little bit of weathering, make it look nice and dirty. And then here's the structure inside the wing. So again, normal, awesome carf quality and uh, our servo mounting points are already glued in, which is great. So there's quite a bit going on on this wing. We've got our aileron, our flap, we've got our light out here, which requires three wires. There's two and then another one. Uh, that's gonna be our, 
our Unilite um, uh, wingtip light that goes right there. We've got our gear, power, our brake, and then we're also gonna have another light that comes out right here. Now the, the MIG has a flip out light and uh, that's, uh, that's one of the things that we're waiting for. Now it's nice on this kit because our root of our wing is parallel to the center line of the aircraft. So when we're installing this light, we've got something to reference, which is right here. So basically when that light comes out, it's gonna come out and be perpendicular to the root of the wing. Uh, we've got a servo that's gonna be opening and closing the door. So that's one more thing to add. And uh, we've got for this drop down light, there's a servo that actually actuates the light. And then of course the, uh, the power for the light. So a lot of different things going on with this, uh, with this wing setup. And that's why we're gonna get started on them. So obviously the first thing we're gonna do is work on the surfaces. And uh, as I mentioned in the unboxing video, we will need to order some additional servos because we need some servos for these gear doors too. So we're gonna need some, I don't think a standard servo fits in there. We'll need some uh, smaller servos. So we'll have to get those things ordered up. We'll need one for each wing, one for each front door. And uh, those are some of the things that we've got to uh, make sure we deal with. So step number one here, I think, is we're gonna start to work on the ailerons on the wings. Now I don't generally do the wings at the same time, but in this case, just to make sure our flap is all paired up and uh, we've got everything working well, we're gonna have these wings lined up, one beside each other, and that'll let us deal with the flap servos at the same time. So first step here is find the wing bags for the parts, which we found, and uh, we've got all of our little parts here to make up our wing stuff. I like that for good terminology. All right, so first thing is we've got to get our mounting surface opened up for the uh, JR servos here. Now, same thing we did on the air brake on the aircraft. These are the exact same mounts. So what we're gonna have to do is basically the same thing as we did on the air brake ones. So we've got to uh, sand this area down. We've got to sand that area down. And then the back, back side there, we've got to take about half the distance off the back wood. Now you're only doing the top layer, not the bottom layer, which sticks in further, right? You're just doing the cutout for the servo itself. All right, so I've laid out some of the parts here for the wings. Um, I think most of it's pretty straightforward, but there's some things here that I don't understand what they're for. So uh, this is all the straightforward stuff. We basically have uh, these ball joints. So this will be used on the flap surface. And then one of these is over there. One of these will be used on the servo end of the aileron. Um, now the reason we need to use one of these on the aileron surface is, I'll show you here in a second. And then we've got all these parts here. Now most of this stuff's pretty straightforward. The only thing that I don't know what they're for is these screws right here. Um, no clue what they're for. Maybe Nez knows, but uh, she hasn't told me yet. All right, so these guys. So I just did a mock-up here. You can see this is how we need to offset the aileron surface servo. So the aileron sits in there. We've got this all sanded down now, but the line here, I'll try and get you as straight as possible. The line for our control arm on the surface lines up with the front face of the servo arm. So I just did a mock up here. This is basically what we're gonna have to do and uh, using a one inch servo arm, I think should be enough travel. And uh, that's what we're gonna end up doing on this aileron surface. So the other thing here, we've got a long control rod and a short control rod. I think the long one is for the ailerons, not 100% sure. And then I think these guys would be used for the gear doors here. And I think that's gonna be the best solution there. And then we've got all those ball joints. Hi, Nez. We've got all these ball joints here for the gear doors. So that's pretty much the layout. 
All right, so just working on the servo arm here and uh, the first problem that we've encountered is, so the lineup, is, it works out really well. That's perfect, that's exactly what we're looking for. But the most that this arm can come up is right there. So we've got our ribs inside the back portion of the wing here. So this, uh, this cross piece right there, and that is going to interfere with the, uh, that servo arm coming up. So that's the first problem that we need to deal with and uh, probably need to sand down, dremel out some of that, uh, that rib. All right guys, so we've got the one aileron hooked up. Honestly, this is uh, a little bit of a tricky venture on these things. I went with the whole method through the, the rib that's here. And uh, <clears throat> I've seen a couple guys raise the servo up, have the horn flipped around. Uh, not a fan of that method because our, as I talked about previously, our servo arm needs to be on this side of the servo. So I think this is a better method and I uh, don't have any issues with it at all. We had to extend our slot here as well as widen it up. Now the servo is not fastened down, but you can see there our servo travel that we're getting is at the tip, we are getting 35 millimeters, which is about an inch and a half. Yeah, 35 millimeters. So that's our servo travel. I had to cut this much off the long carbon rod. So we actually, I tried using the short ones. The short ones are too short and uh, used the, the long carbon stuff and we cut I'll measure this here. So we cut five millimeters off of the carbon rod. I didn't have to cut anything off the threaded rod because there's enough room to thread everything down. So happy with the way this works. Now we are not, uh, we're not finished here because we've still got to get the, the servo fastened down and lots of different things, but uh, we're temporarily put in place. Now what we can do is we can match this. Uh, other thing we did was if our servo arm is straight up and down like this, I have it one notch towards the leading edge. So that way, one notch towards the leading edge so it's not straight up and down. Uh, reason for that is you get a better angle, uh, the travel on the servo works out better, and uh, I think I'm happy with the way this is set up. So this servo gets mounted much like the other ones that we've already done, and uh, basically there's a carbon plate that goes over top of this, bolts down, and uh, that servo is done and mounted. So this wing, the aileron is finished. Now we can do the other wing and get them matching. All right guys, we got some exciting things. We got our MKS servo order and uh, we got our HV 747s. Now these are for the front gear doors and the main gear doors. So we got four of those servos in stock to, uh, to use on the MIG. Now there's probably a less expensive option that would work fine um, in the MKS lineup. Uh, I didn't really, really feel comfortable saving a little bit of money and uh, getting a lot less force. So I think the 747s are a good choice. And the other exciting thing, this isn't really air proline related, but it keeps me cozy and warm. We got our in-floor heating hooked up in the shop and it is awesome. So the slab is toasty warm right now. It's a balmy 71 degrees in here and uh, it's awesome, love it. So that's, that's pretty exciting as well too. And even Luna approves of the new warm floor, right Luna? <laughs> okay guys, so the other aileron on the right uh, wing is done. Uh, that one worked out perfect just like the other one. So that's finished. Just working on the flap servos here. So this is gonna be the right flap servo. I'm just gonna write that on here so we know. And this is the left flap servo. So what I'm doing here is uh, we're using some of the short uh, JR arms. And uh, these are the arms that uh, are normally, I think one inch arms or something like that. But anyways, I've cut these ones down and we'll have a clevis going into this arm. Um, Want to use aluminum arms here just because they're, they're strong. And uh, they're also, I, I've made the holes really close to the, 
output shaft because we're going to get lots of force with this servo setup. So what I'm doing here is just getting the first step done to balancing these servos out. So I had to add a bit of sub trim to the left one to match the right one. Oops, man broke the drill bit off. So that is what we're looking at. So what I've done in the, uh, in the radio here is we've gone in, we've made switch number D, our flap switch. And right now uh, the off position, we're at minus 95. Position one, which is takeoff flaps is 0%. Position two is 60%. So what I've done here is I have put this servo into the right wing. Right now we've got the arm kind of temporarily done up there and it's sitting in the wing, it's attached to the flap. So what I did to, uh, to get this set up is we put the servo in there, this is the off position and I took the clevis, put it up against here where the output uh, point is, drew a mark on the clevis. And then went to full flaps like this so we're in a nice straight line and it's got just a bit of an angle on it there just because the, the servo arm is going to, or the actuating arm is going to come towards the underside of the surface a little bit. And uh, then I've taken that mark and put it over top of the output shaft while the flaps are in the down position. And what that's done is it allowed me to see how much flap travel we're going to get at full flaps with this arm being straight. Now initially, I had that output shaft about, right now it's here, I had it about here, and at full flaps, that wouldn't have been very much travel. So we adjusted this output on the servo into the flap off position, back to here, and then now when we get that full rotation, we're getting lots of flap travel. Now, on this aircraft, there's no real set number or anything, but uh, our flap travel is gonna be pretty substantial. I mean, this, this flap does go completely straight up and down, which is too much, obviously, but uh, this should work out good. So uh, that's how I've set up the flaps in this scenario. Our actual measurement here from center to center, we are looking at uh, about 15 millimeters is what we've done. So what I did was I took these servo arms, put them, both of them together, used my drill press and drilled that hole. So both servo arms in this case are identical size. So next thing to do here is we will have to uh, grind out some of that mount to get the flap servo installed and then we will be able to hook this up and see how it works. All right, so flap, position. I'm hoping these are in the identical position for each wing. The aileron proved that that was correct. I'll take a look at the other wing just to confirm visually to see. Essentially what we're doing here is my mark is maybe tough to see, but it's right there. So it's a white paint marker. So what we need to do is we need to get our final output shaft of the clevis right here on that white mark. So if we measure the distance from the center of the white mark to our output shaft, we are 15 millimeters. So what we need to do is we need to make this 15 millimeters shorter to get that output shaft where that white mark is. So I'm gonna cut 15 millimeters off the carbon. We'll probably end up either threading in more and cutting off a little bit of the, uh, the threaded piece inside but we need to shorten this whole system by 15 millimeters. All right guys, so made a bit of a change to the arm setup. I kept the same arm on the servo, but extended the whole linkage length just a little bit. Now the point of extending the linkage length is to get more push this way, which in turn gives us more flap travel. So now our max flap travel is 
55 degrees. Previously we were getting 40, so uh, that should be plenty of flap. So we're gonna have to adjust our endpoints a little bit on our flaps, but now we have the whole flap setup kind of uh, figured out. All right, so we've got the wings joined here. This is the first wing we did, which is the right wing. This is the left wing, the, the second wing. So what we did is I basically got the servo maxed out measured the angle here. Now, because we've got a bit of a swoop in the, uh, the flap, this angle is different than this angle. So this measures at like 55 degrees. This one measures about 50. So where you measure on that surface will change. So if we take that exact same measurement here, we are now even when that whole arm assembly is straight. So what I had to do was shorten this actuating arm a little bit, about four turns, because we were getting too much travel on this one. So that comes down to different positions of that servo mounting, you know, different variables like horn uh, position, things like that. So that's pretty normal. So now what we'll do is we're gonna get our power box set in the middle. We're gonna hook both flaps up and we're gonna check and make sure that they actually work simultaneously. All right, so we've got the flaps all paired up and uh, they are working good. So flaps off are there, take off flaps, and that's about uh, 15 or 17 degrees actually is what it measures out to be. And then landing flaps. All right, so I'm continuing on with the wings, the ailerons and flaps are complete. Next thing we have to do is worry about running our wiring going from the wingtip light back to the root of the wing. Now we wanna do this now because it's way far out there and the more stuff we get run in the wing, the harder it's gonna be. So in this case, we can kinda of go to here, to there, to there, wherever we need to go. So we'll, probably the best time to figure out our path is right now. Uh, once we get those wires run, what we're gonna do is we are going to start working on our other stuff for the wings. So our gear door servo mounts, uh, we're gonna extend these gear and see how they look. Man, those things are huge, six and a half inch wheels. So cool. Um, get those extended out and uh, that'll expose a bunch of area in here. So I think the next step is probably gonna to be to extend the gear first, so then we have a good path and good visual of our actual channels and stuff to run those wires. So let's get this gear hooked up and then we will extend it for the first time. All right guys, so we have everything hooked up here. Uh, the GS200 Professional Controller, the next generation controller, uses a three cell LiPo battery. The only other controller that uses a three cell LiPo battery is the ER30s. And then the ER40s and 50s all use a two cell LiPo battery. So uh, this should have tons of power. And uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn everything on. Now I haven't turned this on at all yet. So this is going to be, we'll see what happens. Okay, so it says status gear up. If we go gear down, there we go. Oh, wow. Dang. That's uh, quite a marvel on this, uh, this gear on this MIG. Wow. Those are angles. That is crazy. Good job, Carf. Wow. Just beautiful, a nice 3D uh, printed pieces on the inside of these gears. I'll show you guys in a little bit. Wow, this is pretty crazy, you guys. Very impressive. Wow, that's awesome. I'll bring you guys in for a close-up shot here. <laughs> So very cool setup. Um, we've got, you can see the, uh, the gear plates here are, are on crazy angles. And then there's also a 3D printed 
uh, piece right there on both sides. And that also has a, a laminated piece of carbon over top of it. So uh, these are the screws I was talking about for the gear. I think the, uh, the other ones are just spares maybe. But uh, just beautiful looking. Well done, Carf. Uh, so this pivot right here, that swivels. Man, look at all the stuff going on here. That is so cool. That is beautiful gear. Here's a close-up shot from a different angle of what it looks like when it retracts. Very awesome. All right, guys, and this is a nice thing to see. I just pulled one of the gear door bolts out and you can see the white residue there. That is Loctite residue. Very nice to see. Thank you, Carf, for doing that. That is awesome. When you put this gear together, it is nice to see that Loctite was used. We're gonna check a few of these other guys as well too, just to confirm, but uh, that's awesome. So we are gonna pull the covers off here and confirm that the bolts for the gears are also Loctited as well too. So we'll put this guy back in, pull one of these covers off and check it out. All right guys, and more good news. The main bolt there is Loctited. The other bolts are all Loctited. Kudos to Carf. This is the first aircraft that I have built that the manufacturer, I mean, this is obviously it's, uh, the gear was uh, installed on purpose by them. So it would be a huge disservice if they didn't Loctite everything. So, but when you think about a Skymaster aircraft, all of the uh, gears already installed in an F-18 as an example, and none of it's Loctited, it all needs to come out and get dealt with. So kudos Car Carf, you guys did a great job. This is absolutely awesome to see. So I just wanna give any potential owners here a bit of a rundown on how uh, all this stuff looks. So we've taken off the, uh, the main wheel here. The actual brake surface is right there. Uh, it's removable, just sits on top of those uh, three bolts right there that are protruding out. Uh, beautiful workmanship here on the, uh, the wheel. Uh, this piece here slides over top of the axle and it's a spacer. So it's not gonna be solid on here, but it's a spacer for this, the 3D printed part that goes over top. So uh, again, well done Carf, that's awesome. So we're gonna pop this guy back together and uh, super cool. All right, so working on these linkages for the gear doors. Now I didn't use the ball joints that came with the kit. So what we're using here is we're using some Dubro uh, 256 or two millimeter ball joints. These are the 256 ones with a 440 rod end. Now the three millimeter rod threads into that no problem. So that's what we're using on the one side. And then we use a clevis on the other side. Now the reason we're using a clevis is partly because, or really simply because this hole right here is uh, perfectly sized for a three millimeter clevis. So the geometry we're going for here, and this is what we're gonna to have to set up, is with door closed, we wanna be in this position, and we wanna have the arm, kinda of like the reverse of a flap. Uh, we wanna have the servo arm like this, so mechanically it's actually holding that door closed. And then to open the door, it's gonna extend like this, and that's gonna hold the door open. Now these are 15 millimeter Seacraft arms with a Futaba spline and uh, of course MKS servo. So uh, what we're gonna do one at a time here is I need to get this servo plugged in the, uh, the controller so we can get this programmed um, at least uh, kind of in the, in the zone of where we need to be for getting this servo arm installed. All right, so I've set this one up here with a 15 millimeter Seacraft arm. Now, the reason I use this arm is because that's the only Seacraft one that I had. Um, this arm is, it actually works well. Uh, basically what happens is that door doesn't open all the way straight up and down. So we've got a little bit of an angle. Uh, so on the fuselage here, the door would be sitting uh, not straight up and down. It's gonna have just a bit of an angle in like that. Now that would work. There's uh, about a finger width, about half an inch in between the gear and the door. 
So it's close, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this, uh, this servo arm out. All right, so I ended up switching out the servo horn for the MKS carbon horns. Uh, these are awesome new horns. They're also listed on my website as well. And uh, they've got kind of like a, an aluminum or, uh, I don't think they're brass, but they're aluminum carrier there. Fit on the splines beautifully. And uh, the carbon horn here is awesome as well. Uh, the carbon actually just pops off the, uh, the spline carrier. You can see the three dots there holding it on that integrate with the carbon. So uh, the second hole out here is actually uh, 19, 20 millimeters. So that was perfect. Uh, this is a one inch horn, I believe. So we ended up just chopping the horn off and that's the result. So now when we have those doors open all the way, they are straight up and down and they still close beautifully and everything is, uh, is good. So uh, that's fine. That one's set up, ready to go. And uh, I think that, uh, that worked out good. All right, guys, as a last step, we're gonna paint these wheel wells with silver and uh, picked up some Tamiya uh, titanium silver. It looked like it was the best color. Uh, that's X32 is the number. So we're just gonna paint this entire area, uh, this side right here, just to make it look not so uh, so ghetto looking. Uh, I think Dave Wilshire, I saw him paint his wheel wells like that, and it looks really good. So we're gonna do that. This is also the same color we're gonna use on our control horns all over the plane, like in that area there. So once we're done that, I will show you guys the final result and we'll cycle this gear and see how it looks. All right guys, we have the whole gear system on this plane for the mains done. Uh, a couple finicky things here you just have to be careful of is the positioning of these servos is, at least in this aircraft, is different in both wings. So this servo here was actually sticking out further and the arm when it closes was hitting the wheel. So what we had to do was take one of the layers of uh, carbon and wood out here, you can see it there, and that sinks the servo in more underneath the, uh, the main wing tube here. So now it doesn't hit the, uh, the tire anymore, which is good. Uh, we've painted the inside of the wheel wells here silver, and uh, that's a nice little uh, addition from the uh, ugly brown stuff. So let's take a look at this gear with everything working. All right, so gear up. Now the doors would normally close right now, but it waits for the signal from the front gear, which the front gear is not connected. So that's why it's not closing right, right away. And then gear down. Beautiful. All right guys, and that is it for build video number two in the Carf MIG-17 build series. We got the wing all done in this video. Still have obviously the lighting kit to install in the wing and um, but the mechanics of the wing are all complete. Uh, Carf, again, you guys did a great job on this, uh, this gear setup. Very, very impressive. Thank you for Loctiting everything. Thank you, thank you. That is so nice to see as a builder. It is a huge time saver. So thumbs up to you guys for doing that. Um, next video, we are probably gonna start to move into the fuselage. So we're gonna get into the uh, nose gear, the nose doors, and then we'll probably start uh, organizing the equipment in the aircraft as well too. And uh, we're just waiting on the cockpit and the lighting set. So when that comes, then we'll start moving into those things. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. Beautiful wing, and we'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Take number two, because I forgot to push record. <sighs> after two minutes of talking.